today we are going to discuss about our another lecture different system used for bioremediation what are the different system which can be used for bioremediation processes one of the system is microbial bioremediation and the second system is phytoremediation so what is microbial bioremediation system in microbial bioremediation system we have to use different types of microorganisms which have the ability to degrade or bioremediate different types of pollutant so it is the bioremediation of organic contaminants which is primarily based on either microorganisms naturally present at the sites or on microbial inoculants which can be developed in the laboratory and then they can be introduced at the bioremediation site or the pollution site different microorganisms can be used for this purpose bacterial algal fungal species can be used which are capable of accumulating some toxic inorganic contaminants as well and over a period of time microbe use up these compounds thus they can degrade different types of pollutants so different microorganisms can be used like fungal algal and bacterial cells and they have different abilities like some microorganisms can produce different enzymes some can produce some uh, microorganism can produce different bio detergents and some microorganism can bio absorb or bio adsorb the pollutants so one of the system is bacterial system there are different types of bacteria in each strain of bacteria consumes a very limited range of hydrocarbons means it uh, very limited bacterial cells can uh, degrade different types of pollutants or a mixture of pollutants they have limited capability they have limited uh, production of enzymes or bio detergents and the rate can be enhanced by using artificially well characterized mixture of bacterial strains along with inorganic nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen which can be pumped into the water or applied to oil spill areas and this increases the rate of bioremediation significantly there are certain uh, limitations to the biological treatment of these waste material what are those limitations one of the limitation is that no single microorganism can degrade no single microorganism can degrade all organic waste in high concentration of organic compounds can inhibit the activity of degradative microorganisms it means that no single microorganism can degrade all organic waste because they have no ability to degrade all types of pollutants and when there is high concentration of compounds Uh, it can inhibit the bacterial growth it can kill the bacterial cells and what will happen it will affect the bioremediation process it will slow down bioremediation process or it will stop the bioremediation process and most contaminated sites contain mixture of chemicals and organisms that can degrade one or more of the compounds of mixture which may be inhibited by other components it means that sometime when microbial cells degrade one compound into other components so the component can inhibit the growth of other bacterial cells which can slow down the microbial bioremediation process and many compounds absorb onto our in the soil or sediments and it can become less available it means that uh, sometime it happens that when uh, microbial cells uh, cannot reach the pollutants so it is very difficult for them to degrade those types of pollutants and they are usually absorbed onto the soil on the sediments and they are not easily available for the microbial cells and microbial biodegradation of the compound is very slow process uh, it means that uh, when you do on site treatment so sometime there will be rain sometime there will be high temperature so the conditions will vary with time due to the environmental uh, or due to the seasonal variations also so the process is usually slow process there so what 
uh, we have to do that we have to optimize those conditions for this limitation to uh, to optimize these conditions into the bioreactor can uh, greatly enhance the bioremediation process then bioremediation of hydrocarbons as we know that uh, hydrocarbons are the compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen and petroleum and its products are hydrocarbon and oil constitute a variety of hydrocarbons like xylene, naphthalene, octanes and camphor are present into the uh, petroleum oil and these pollutants can be degraded by mixture of microorganisms uh, like pseudomonas, uh, cornibacterium, arthrobacter, mycobacterium and leucardia and we know that uh, it can be the process can be enhanced by adding some uh, genetically engineered bacterial strains uh, which can greatly increase the process of bioremediation. In 1979, Anand Mohan Chakrabarti was a scientist. What he did that he obtained a strain of Pseudomonas putida which contained the xylene and naphthalene plasmids and as well as a hybrid plasmid which was derived by combinating parts of, of camphor and octane plasmids. Then in 1990s, the USA government allowed him to use the superbug for cleaning up of an oil spill in water of state of Texas and it was produced on a large scale in the laboratory and it was mixed with straw and it was dried and then it was used for further processes. Here is a general mechanism of oil eating microbes that how oil can be degraded by using microbial cells and as we know that naturally occurring microbes in the ocean can feed on hydrocarbons in the oil and researchers hope that it can be used uh, for different oil spillage areas where warm temperature also aid the reaction and oil contains hydrocarbons which are made up of varying amounts of carbon and hydrogen and uh, we can enhance the process by adding oxygen by adding fertilizers also and when we add fertilizers so it can increase the number of microbes also uh, it acts like it acts like a uh, nutrients and it can increase the growth of other microorganisms also and it can cause algal bloom which can affect the uh, ecosystem or it, it can affect the photosynthetic activity and the life of the microorganisms and life of the other organisms in ocean also. And uh, we can add some oxygen also, uh, but this oxygen can be sparse at, uh, at great ocean depths. Then uh, microbes break apart the hydrocarbons and combine them with oxygen to create water and carbon dioxide. And not all of the oil can be consumed, but what is left over is more easily dispersed by currents and winds. Some fungi can trap metallic ions in aqueous solutions, and it is due to their spatial cell wall composition. And raw biological material is called biomass and it is often used as a starting material in industrial processes. There are different fungi which can absorb or bioabsorb different types of pollutants like dye waste water etc and many heavy metals etc. In many fermented industries produce some fungal biomass and this fungal biomass can be grown on different bioproducts and then which can be used for this purpose. In the biomass of fungus rhizopus, a rhizus can absorb 30 to 130 milligram of cadmium per gram of dry biomass. And one of the example is candida, which can degrade formaldehyde or it can uh, treat uh, wastewater of formaldehyde. And cyanide uh, water can be treated by Gibrella uh, species of fungus. Here uh, you can see diagram of uh, biodecolorization of dye waste water. Uh, you can see the clear difference between the both two and you can see the dye waste water is treated by fungal strains. Then another 
system is phytoremediation system and phytoremediation is the use of plants for accumulation, removal or conversion of different types of pollutants. Especially uh, specific plants are collected and selected and they are then grown on different uh, soil, uh, different polluted soil and then they are grown for a particular time period and after that they are harvested and then plants are disposed in a safe way. There are different types of phytoremediation, phytostabilization, phytovolatilization, phytostimulation, phytotransformation and phytoextraction etc. How this phytoremediation actually works? Plants are selected and grown in contaminated area for a required growth period and then plants are uh, uh, these plants can transform or absorb the pollutants through root system and accumulate the water and nutrients essential for their growth as well as other components. Then plants are harvested in a safe way, they are processed and disposed of in a safe way. Different plants are used in various applications like poplar, grasses, alfalfa, mulberry rice, sunflower, barley, bulrush and duckweed. Poplar and grasses etc. are used for remediation of contaminants such as herbicides, nutrients and ammonious waste etc. And uh, these plants can be used like mulberry and rye for pesticides, sunflower and barley can be used for metal waste and bulrush and duckweed can be used for metals and radionuclides. Here are different uh, methods of bioremediation. One of the method is phytodegradation. This phyto, in phytodegradation, plants are used in which plants uptake, store and degrade contaminants within its tissues and then they degrade these pollutants. And in phytostimulation or rhizodegradation, use of rhizospheric association between plants and symbiotic side relationship to degrade the contaminants. In phytostimulation or rhizodegradation, actually uh, plants utilize uh, its roots and they do symbiotic relationship with microbes and then they together degrade different contaminants. Third approach or method is phytovolatilization. In phytovolatilization, use of plants ability to uptake contaminants, transform it and volatilize contaminants into, uh, into the atmosphere. In phytovolatilization, uh, plant takes uh, different components of the pollutants or pollutants through their root system and then after uh, treatment they volatilize into the atmosphere from their uh, surfaces. In phyto extraction, in phyto extraction, uh, different plants are used to absorb, translocate, and store toxic contaminants from soil into their roots and the tissues. This is called phyto extraction. And there is difference between phyto degradation and phyto extraction process. Like in phyto degradation, plant uh, uptake, store, and degrade contaminants, and then they have to uh, degrade those contaminants. However, in phyto extraction, plants uh, absorb, translocate and store toxic contaminants from soil into their roots and the tissues. Another approach or method is phytostabilization. In phytostabilization, plants mediated immobilization or binding of contaminants into the soil. Here you can see in uh, this uh, figure that this is called phytostabilization in which uh, roots uh, uh, it cause the mediated immobilization or binding of contaminants into the soil and they are then not freely available and then they cannot cause toxicity. Here are some benefits of phytoremediation. One of the benefits they are effective and low cost and environment friendly. Another benefit there, soil cleanup of heavy metals and organic compounds and pollutants are absorbed into the roots and thus plants removed could be disposed or burned. Sunflower plants uh, were used to remove cesium compounds at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and transgenic plants with exogenous methylothionine and metal binding protein 
can be used to remove the metals.